The coronavirus remains. The world is still in chaos. But here is a moment of peace and tranquility. This is Lockdown Bard. Uh, this week's poem is called On Cottle Red Hand, and is regarding someone named Cottle Red Hand. This is a fairly typical praise poem. A praise poem was a poem written about how great somebody was. This poem has all the hallmarks of a praise poem. It praises his looks, his physical abilities, and his great victories in war. It begins by entreating Cottle to allow the bard to stay with him, to, to depend upon Cottle's kindness. Now, this may have been a genuine entreatment that was written as part of the poem, or it may have been a device used by the poet to make a commissioned piece seem more genuine and spontaneous. Praise poems were often commissioned by the person they were written about. Let's begin. Let us spend Easter with Cottle in the name of Jesus, son of the High Father. O oh, son, remember our troubles to thee. Listen, O oh, blue-eyed king of the Shannon, we and two attendants, is not the state of us four wretched, begging? The four forbidden to every throng, without the meal of a single man among us. A good defence for our aid are the Lord and O'Connor. Let us go to seek a boon from the curly-haired ruler of Athena. If Athena's ruler refuses, we shall ask no boon in Ireland. Our business with his clustering locks. One mouth is enough to ask it, yet I will not pursue that without my fellow bird accompanying me. I deem sufficient from the calm-eyed playful prince the award that Muradoc has named. I am seeking no more than what my companion has asked. Thou hast one hand of the colour of snow, O shining kingly face. Thy other hand is red, dear to me the artist by whom they were shaped. Famously rises the anger of O'Connor the red-handed, a ruddy hand and a bright hand about the spear hath the white-souled darling of Banva. The Prince of Fall was born with his charter in one hand, gallant champion of Con's plain, a bright crimson hand from his shoulder. The shooting of his right hand is not easy to tell. Breasts are reddened with darts from O'Connor's crimson hand. He sets a shield to protect his skin against the spears that do not go past him. To the sharp spears he will fasten the famous left hand. Many a shaft with bright slender loop has been drawn by Cottle's tapering palm. The graceful palm of Cottle the Red-Handed has cast a quick battle spear. Good on horseback, excellent on foot, is the shooting of Cottle of Doom Dorlas. Con's descendant catches a lance in flight between the horse's back and the sky. With good omen was the king of Moy, Twer Yalvok's son, brought to Tara. No herdsman watches a cow in the time of the descendant of Tuhul Chakvar. Pleasant was the vision that appeared to me last night of the battalions of Kroacha, how he went forth into Meath, and each stone building became a blazing bush. Sparks of fire I seem to see throughout its markets. The sparks, tis a well-founded judgment, were O'Connor's raiding bands. I see the green wave of the wild sea coming over then yonder. 
The wild green wave of the sea is the bright, red-handed, thin-lipped prince. It is the red hand that will drive eastwards the foreigners who have seized Tara. It were no grief to me that he should banish them all from Ireland. The white and ruddy prince, sprung from Duach Galch, makes a land to be without cloak or cow. Duach Galch's descendants bestows upon the Gaelic a goblet from a red vat. The voices of his hounds make the king of Ireland dumb. Till he hears a hound in the pack, no speech is got from him. Blue horns bring heat into the face of bright Gora's descendant. That is a good defeat of old ale bright horns. A crimson tunic like a red berry. A scarlet mantle decked with great ornaments. And a fine shirt like white chalk are about the sides of the descendant of Art in Far. He casts off the flower of his raiment while playing chess. He throws back his sleek, soft hair with his long-fingered, smooth red hand. A blue eye he has with dark lashes, smooth, long-fingered hands, a foot, slender, noble and smooth, and a brow, delicate, brown, long-ridged. Often in books is told of Ter Yalvok's bright skinned air, curving locks with ringlets above. One third of his frame I do not tell. That was On Cockle Red Hand. I hope you all enjoyed listening to that, and thank you very much for joining.